Welcome! In this tutorial, we'll look at how to configure TechMaker and use some of its special features. First, we'll go to Options, Configure TechMaker, and under this first area, Commands, go down and take a look at PDF Viewer. So you can choose whether you want to use the built-in viewer or the external viewer. Right now I'm using the built-in viewer and that allows me to see my document right alongside my code and I can toggle that on or off with this button down here. If instead of the built-in viewer I use an external viewer, I'm not going to have that option to see the PDF output on the right. Instead, after I build my file, I would have to click here to view my file. Now by default, TechMaker assumes that I'm using Adobe Acrobat Reader. Um, I actually don't. I use another program called Nitro PDF. So if you use something different, what you need to do is browse the, through your computer directory and find the executable file that allows you to view PDFs. So I'm going to look in my program files, Nitro PDF, and find that executable file, which is right here. This is the path to that file. So now, when I, after I build my file, to, it's automatically going to open up the PDF in my PDF viewer, which happens to be Nitro PDF. If you use Adobe, it should open up in Adobe Reader. I prefer the built-in viewer because I like to build my file often. That way, if I do make an error, I catch it quickly. And uh, if I wait till the end to build, um, then a lot of times I have a bunch of errors and it takes me much longer to fix them. Under Quick Build, you can choose the type of output. Um, for me, that's PDF LaTeX, plus I want to view my PDF. And then um, under Editor, you can change the font and font size of the code. This is not going to affect your output document. This is just going to affect your source code. So if it's too small for you, you want it to be larger, you can increase that or decrease it so that you can fit more on your screen and so forth. I like to keep word wrap turned on and auto completion and show line numbers. Over here you can change the color preferences if you like. Right now everything in math mode will be green, commands will be red, keywords will be blue. Below that we have our spelling dictionary. So right now the box is checked so the spell check is turned on and we can see in my source code those red underlined words um, are not in the dictionary. So, for example, here this word explan explanations should be explanations. That's a typo. I could right click and choose from their list of suggestions, or I could have just fixed it uh, myself directly. You may find it distracting because a lot of the things you type really aren't misspellings, they're just words that the dictionary doesn't recognize. So, if you find that um, distracting, you can always go into your options and turn off that spell check. And now we see I don't get any of those red underlined words. Okay, so, so we saw that we could toggle the PDF viewer on or off to allow more space to work on your source code. We can also toggle the message window on or off. If you try and build a file and there are error messages, that's automatically going to pop up but you can always hide it. And the structure tab you can toggle on or off as well. Right now this is showing me my sections. So if I click on critical thinking questions, it's going to highlight that section in the code or I can go to um, the next section here and it's highlighting that for me, section two and section three. You can, this is how you um, choose to see this view. You can also change over here to display various types of symbols. Let me turn off my PDF viewer so I have a little more room. You 
if I wanted to insert a relation symbol instead of looking up the code if I didn't know what it was I could just choose it from the box here and as soon as I click on something it's going to insert it so for example if I wanted to type uh, in math mode 4x plus or minus I could just click here and it's going to insert that slash pm 3 and close out of math mode we have arrow symbols other miscellaneous symbols you might want to use the ellipses various bracketing symbols our Greek letters most used symbols so I, I generally type the code out by hand I don't click on these very often so you can see my most used box is pretty empty but that will automatically update as you use some of these commands and then uh, the last one here is favorites symbols and you can put anything you want in your favorites so for example if we go to the Greek letters and you think pi is something that you use frequently you can right click and say add to favorites and now when I look at my favorites window there's the symbol for pi if you want to remove something you simply right click remove that from your favorites we also have our list of various left bracketing symbols and right bracketing symbols. Over here, um, in order to use these commands, you want to highlight some text first. So maybe in my title here, critical thinking questions, if I highlight that and I click on this symbol, it's going to make it bold. This would make it italic, this would make it underlined. So for example, if I click underline, you can see it inserted the code backslash underline and curly brackets around the text that I had selected. So using these icons on the left over here can be a time saver if you don't remember the code. I find it quicker just to type it out, but you can experiment with those. You can also find commands using the file menu up top. If we look at under LaTeX there's all kinds of um, commands we can choose and you just simply click on the one that you want so instead of typing out the use package command you can simply click here but remember if you have auto completion turned on as soon as you start typing slash use it's going to suggest um, that command for you and you can simply hit enter to complete that we also have under the math menu here various things you can select fractions square roots We've got under math functions a variety of commands, math font styles, math accents, math spaces. Let's take a look at the wizard menu. And before doing this, I'm just going to close this file. And I'm going to start a new LaTeX document. I'm going to go to my wizard and choose quick start and we can set up some options here the document class will be article and you can see what some of the other options are as well but we almost always use article I want to use 11 point the paper size letter paper a4 is very similar it's not the spacing isn't that much different um, encoding Latin 1 you can keep or you can go to UTF-8 the author and title if you want to fill in that information and you can choose to include certain packages so the geometry package is a popular one AMS packages um, the make IDX package the graphics package so if you know you automatically want to include those every time you quick start a new document it's a great idea to check those boxes now when I click OK it should automatically set up my document now it did input some extra information that we really don't need if we're just doing a basic LaTeX document so you may or may not want to use this. Also under the wizard menu you can do quick tabular and we saw how to create a table by hand but this could be a little bit easier you can select the number of columns and rows uh, the type of alignment whether you want to have a, a top border or not um, etc and you can then enter what you want in your cells.
Likewise, you can also set up an array in much the same way. Under user, user tags, you can create custom tags uh, much the way we defined macros in an earlier tutorial. So if I go to edit user tags, if there's something that you think you may use frequently, so for example, um, we could call this, I'm not going to say backslash title because that is already a command used for something else. Uh, maybe I'll call it my title. And then the LaTeX content, I could do backslash title. Algebra 1 homework backslash author and you can put your name backslash date backslash today so it'll automatically update and then backslash make title okay so now uh, when we go to create a new document, instead of typing those four lines to get my title, I can go to user, user tags, and I've saved that under number one. So it'll input that automatically for me. I don't have to type it each time. You'll also find on our editing toolbar um, these drop-down menus that'll let you choose section, subsection, sub subsection, etc., different kinds of labels, different sizes for the fonts. We talked about some of these in an earlier tutorial as well. And uh, one thing I have not mentioned uh, yet which is worth making note of is how to insert comments into your code. Sometimes it's really helpful just to leave a note in your code for yourself for future reference but when you compile your document you don't want it to show up. You want it to, to kind of remain hidden. So we call that a comment. Um, and any line of code that you don't want the compiler to look at, you comment out by putting a percent symbol in front. So for example, if I know that I'm not going to be using any graphics in this particular doc document, I could delete the line use package graphic X or I could comment that line out by putting a percent symbol in front of it. And notice what happens, it turns gray. So this is going to be hidden from the compiler. So that's one way to use a comment is to hide par uh, parts of your code that you don't really want to compile or um, you can leave notes for yourself. For example, here we might um, put this changes the margins. So when you come back later and you look at your code, you remember what that particular command is used for. And again, notice that everything after the percent symbol is grayed out. Once you move to the next line, since we've, um, we have a line break here, then it's no longer commented out after the line break. If you submit your homework as a tech file, um, then what I could do is come in and make comments about certain parts of your homework and that way when you compile your file it would still look like your original, original document that you sent me but I would be able to have my comments in your source code as well. And finally um, I want to make sure to point out under help in the file menu there is a user manual and a LaTeX reference guide. If you click on the LaTeX reference it's an alphabetized um, index of all the LaTeX commands that you could use. And if you um, find the one you want to learn more about, for example, this slash F box, you click on it and it will show you the syntax, the correct syntax to use that command and then a brief explanation of um, what it does for you. The user manual is specific to TechMaker. Uh, so if you're wondering what certain buttons are used for or how to accomplish um, certain features, you can always look in the user manual here. Okay, that concludes our tutorial on TechMaker tips and hints. Hopefully you found this useful.